Cybersecurity awareness is important everywhere we go. Imagine you're at Cyber World Park. Rebecca's there at the park with her family. She decides that the park is really busy and some of the lines are long, and so she wants to play an online game on her phone while she's waiting. She needs to connect to Wi-Fi, so she looks at several network options. Look at the picture and find the word networks. This is a list of all the available networks that Rebecca can connect to. Look at the different options for available networks. A network is a collection of connected devices. It can include computers, printers, or the internet. A network can allow multiple devices to connect. So what are the available networks in this picture? What differences do you notice about them? What do the symbols mean next to each network? I'll let you look and think about the options that are there. There are seven networks with different names. Some have locks, which mean they require passwords. One doesn't have a lock, so it will not ask you for a password. The linked circles tell me it's a hotspot. And then there are some that have three bars or fans that represent a wireless access point. So what network seems to you like it's the most likely to be the park's guest Wi-Fi and why? How would you find out which network is the official one? You may think that Cyber World Guest would be the right one because it's locked and it shows Wi-Fi. But to be sure, you should probably ask someone who works at the park or look for a sign that might be posted. Having an awareness of what networks you're connecting to can keep you and your devices safe. Making smart cyber choices and being cyber aware can be one part of how layered security strategies provide network and device protection. A device that I use often is my laptop. Think about your favorite device or a device that you use often. What are things your device needs to be protected from? So we definitely want to make sure that our devices are protected from computer viruses or people trying to hack into that device. So think of one example of how your device is protected from those things. Talk with your teacher or your caregiver about some ways to protect your devices. On many of my own devices, I use a layered security approach. So to unlock my laptop, I enter a password. That's the first security layer. Then a special code is sent to my phone. I must also enter that code on my laptop for the second security layer. If someone wants to get into my laptop, they would need both the password and the code. So this layered approach known as defense in depth provides extra protection to keep my device secure. Many of the devices you discussed rely on Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. What Wi-Fi do you usually connect to first? So of course, when I'm at home, I pick my home Wi-Fi. At school, you join the school's Wi-Fi. Sometimes you may use a caregiver's hotspot. Why would you select that Wi-Fi first over another option that might be publicly available? Well, we know the password to it, right? My caregiver or my teacher said that that one is safe and told me to connect to it. Often, you'll have a password to enter to limit who can access your home or your school's Wi-Fi. Being able to control who has that access to the password provides another layer of security by limiting who can access your Wi-Fi. There is also a network at your school. The school network allows you to access internet and connect you to all of the school's devices. Some of you may have a home network that your family shares. Our network at school is more public than our home network, but it's not as public as the network at the Cyber World theme park. We need to protect our network from computer viruses or people trying to join that network without permission. What are some examples of how your network is protected from those things? Only people with the correct password can join it, right? The ways of protecting devices and networks that you shared are all really important to have, but what would happen if that one method failed? So think about that for a moment. What are some possible outcomes if your one method, like using a password, failed? If the method failed and you only had one layer of security, then someone could get in and your device or your network would not be as protected or safe anymore. So working together with your home networks to prevent and stop threats is another layer of protection known as firewalls. This term first came from the physical barriers that were created to prevent the spread of fire in a building. Firewalls in a technology system aren't meant to stop the spread of a real fire, so how do you think that name would apply as a firewall in a network? A firewall in a network would digitally block 
the threat or the trap so that it doesn't spread. A firewall is like a filter that decides what is trusted or untrusted information that's coming into your network from the internet. If the firewall decides the information can't be trusted, it will not let it pass from the internet into your home or your school's network. People can also control the settings on a firewall to allow more or less access to sites. Can you think of an example of when a firewall may have prevented you from accessing something on the internet? You may not have been able to access some online games or other sites at school, or maybe you've gotten a message on a school computer that said that the site was blocked by a firewall. Or at home, your caregivers sometimes say that you can't open a site if it's not a safe, trusted site. Your devices can be protected by both the network password and the firewall as they work together to block untrusted people or information. Now think about parental controls. How do you think the controls that your caregivers put on your devices or your network provide an additional layer of protection? So like network settings or the firewall, those controls from your caregiver or even your school are designed to limit the threats that you encounter online. Layered security solutions work together to protect your network and your devices. The advantages of having layered security is that if one layer fails, then another layer can still protect you. You can provide an additional layer of protection yourself by making smart choices and thinking carefully before you go to websites or join networks, especially thinking before joining a free Wi-Fi, like when you were at Cyber World Park. Remember that having each layer individually is important to protect your networks, but using those layers together provides even stronger protection for your network.